So I think April is potentially the only month this year where I have read everything on my TBR. How exciting. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel every week and then movie reviews here at the weekend. This one is a little bit late, so we're just over a week, but um, basically I just was not here this week at all. May is the story of me listening to audiobooks whilst moving house and like taking time away from all of that to sit and read a couple of eBooks and a paperback. I hope you are impressed. Um, as always, I will break my reading down into the kind of books that I read, starting with ebooks, then paperbacks, then finishing with what is always my biggest category, audiobooks. And in the description box below, you will find my blog and my Goodreads, where I have posted reviews already, I have, of some of these books. So let's dive right in. I read a, oh no, this isn't a May wrap-up, is it? It's an April wrap-up. I <laughs> I read um, an ebook that is released on the 10th of May here in the UK, and this is The Cassandra Complex by Holly Smale. I love Holly Smale. I loved her Geek Girl series. I enjoyed her Valentine series. I mean, obviously, we know her for her Geek Girl series, but this is own voices representation for um, autism and um, the main character Cassandra is um, uh, has autism and is um, trying to sort of function in life when she finds that she has a kind of special power to be able to relive some of those moments again and sort of do them better this was quite a stressful read but in a really good way it made me really uncomfortable in a really good way i loved everything that it was doing i just thought it was amazing i haven't posted my review yet because as i say it's not out until the 10th of may but by the time you're watching this video i may have posted it on my blog so keep an eye out for that um because i just this this book was fabulous i couldn't wait to get back to it even though it made me uncomfortable because I felt like there was really good reason for it making me uncomfortable. And um, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend. It's adult fiction. It's got a bit of romance in there, but a lot of like self-reflection and introspection. And I just really, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend. And then the other ebook I read is also a, I think May 10th release. This may be May 8th because sometimes ebooks that are part of a series are released slightly earlier. I'm just trying to find it. I read the first part of the um, All Things Crafty series from Bella Osborne, An Invitation to Sea Seashell Bay. Now, this one was a little bit stressful as well because we have our main character who is trying to sort of get her crafting business a little bit more off the ground. Um, and she goes for a pitch at a much bigger crafting business to try and kind of work with them on some exclusive products. And um, her day does not go well when she goes into London to pitch to this other firm. You know, everything that could go wrong does. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just one of those comedy moments I really felt for her. Um, and then when she sort of gets back, she knows she needs to hire an assistant. That also lands her into a little bit of, um, not bother, but like it's harder than it needs to be. Um, but I am really intrigued to find out what happens next with the sort of hiring an assistant, getting her business further off the ground thing for her. And then we have her flatmate who is a teaching assistant and um, it's a teaching assistant in like a really awful school situation. Like the teaching assistants and the teachers are just completely separate. They never eat lunch together. They're really disrespected. They're not allowed to mark books, which I think is really, really strange because if a teaching assistant is working with a group, if they're doing assessment as they go along for that group, they should be allowed to mark the books of the group that they've marked or if they were an integral part of the lesson, then they should be allowed to mark books for that lesson. I was like, oh, she's like, oh, I could get into trouble if you find out it's it's not me. And I've like learned how to forge the teacher's writing. I'm like, mm, this sounds really bad. I want her to like get out of there, go for her some, uh, some coaching. But she's at a little bit of a crossroads in her life as well. And so they make a really good pair and they make for some really 
interesting um, reading, although there is some uh, safeguarding stuff going on at the school that's really like bothering me, like I want to kind of step in and do something there. Um, then moving on to my paperback read, which I have definitely got a review of on my blog because I was part of the blog tour for this one. This is The Book Lovers Retreat by Heidi Swain. Now, when I filmed my April TBR, because we're April, not May, um, when I filmed my April TBR, I um, had not started reading all of this one yet, and I didn't realise, but this is the book that I am actually in. Um, so in the acknowledgements, it's no, no spoiler here, but in the acknowledgements, it says... Um, Congratulations to Katrina Merriweather, uh, who has been waiting to see her name in one of my books since December 2021. I hope you like the part you've played and thank you for your patience, such as the schedule attached to writing two titles a year. I know you've had an extremely long wait, but that said, it really does feel like this one was the right fit for you, which I absolutely agree. This was the right fit for me. I liked the um, character. My first name was attached to it. It's not my whole name. Um, but this one is a book about book lovers who like come together and go to the location of a book series and its film spin-off in the Lake District. Now, I was actually meant to be going up to the Lake District just as I'd finished um, reading this book. I was actually gonna be there just the day before my stop on the blog tour. So I was like, I can get great pictures. But then I had some car issues and didn't end up managing to go because I had to get the car fixed first. Um, but, this was just wonderful. Um, it's a standalone and um, I think, is it Heidi's first standalone? It's very exciting that it's her first standalone. And I love the image of the two people on the front here, like reading on the window by the Lake District because I know like most Aprils for my entire life, I've sat near a window with this view, reading a book, enjoying reading in the Lake District. And so I can really like, feel and identify with these characters um <clears throat> we've got sort of a group of three friends who come together then there's another friend who joins them and that puts a bit of a spanner in the works then there's katrina the person who's let the cottage to them then there's the guy that works in the bar oh it's a whole cast of characters who are really very interesting and um oh, i just loved it i really really loved it i read it very very quickly i really enjoyed it i did read i read yeah i read the paperback version um <clears throat> and yeah it was just it was wonderful rom-com at its best a book about book lovers set in the lake district what more could you want for a nice spring to summer read hey um then into all of the audiobooks and again <clears throat> all of these were on my TBR. So I managed to read finally the next book <clears throat> in the um, Hopeless series. Oh, goodness, that's shiny. So I read Losing Hope, um, which is the sequel to Hopeless. Um, and this one is the same story, but from Holder's point of view. And so that was interesting because I didn't realize it was going to be the same story. I thought I was going to find out what happens next. But it was really interesting hearing the the whole story from his point of view. And um, because I already knew the story and I was quite familiar with it, I sped it up to, I think, two and a half speed. And so I was able to listen to it all in one go. Um, this story is so interesting. It's not what I was expecting. However, I did then go ahead and read the um, next one in the series because I was like, maybe this will tell me what happens next. Finding Cinderella, which is the next novella in the series. This book, this series is two books and two novellas. Um, and this one did not tell me what happens next in the series because this takes Holder's friend Daniel and um, one of the other characters from the series who I'm not going to mention because that would be a spoiler and puts them in the limelight. But although it didn't tell me what happens next to um, Sky and Holder, it did um, give me a bit more depth to a couple of the other characters from the series. And so I really enjoyed this one. So I listened to those literally back to back whilst painting the skirting board on my stairs. So there's a little insight into exactly how I read it. I'm sorry, it is still really quite early. So we're, we're, we're chugging the iced coffee here. We got the colour changing Disney Castle, of course. It did have Minnie Mouse ice cubes in, but obviously when you put the espresso on top, they are no longer Minnie Mouse shaped. 
Um, then I listened to a book for a book versus movie. Now, it's not a full book versus movie, but it is a book versus TV series. So I have watched four out of the six episodes of the TV series, but I have read the book. And so I've listened to Fleischman is in Trouble by um, Taffy Bro Brodessa Ackner. Um, and this is a series which um, here it is on Disney Plus. So I imagine in the US it is on Hulu. Um, and this one stars Jesse Eisenberg and Claire Danes and like a whole host of other people. It's really sort of heavily cast. I really enjoy the casting in it. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about the book, but I feel like when my book versus movie video comes your way very soon, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that one. I feel like I'm going to feel the same way about the TV series as I did about the book. Like, I just feel a little bit, it was, it was fine. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing bad that I could find about it, but it didn't grab me and it didn't kind of, um, it's not very memorable. I think that's, that's my sort of issue with it. And yet I was attracted to the book because I saw the trailer for the TV show when I was at the cinema. Um, and so I was like, oh, this is based on a book. I'll get the book. I'll read the book. We'll watch the TV show. This looks like something I will enjoy. Um, yeah, this upside downness of the cover though will feature in my book versus movie discussion because that's it's significant. Um, and then a couple of non-fictions that I really enjoyed listening to, again, whilst mainly painting, um, tape, painting skirting boards, painting staircases, uh, unpacking things and assembling things. There we go. I think I, I built the bookcases you see behind me whilst listening to a couple of these. So I listened to Losing It, Sex Education for the 21st Century by Sophia Smith Gaylor. Um, and now this one, she is a journalist, but she talks a lot about the new curriculum that came in in 2021. She mainly does so from a secondary perspective, um, but she does talk about primary a little bit, um, in case you're unaware, I am a primary school teacher. Um, and I do predominantly have, uh, throughout my career, I've predominantly taught year six. And so this is definitely relevant to me. Um, but it was really interesting what she was saying about, you know, quality sex education. And if children aren't receiving quality sex education at school, this was the idea behind the new curriculum that came in, you know, are they receiving it at home? What information are they getting from the internet? What information are they getting from their friends? Um, and so it was an interesting discussion and it featured a lot of kind of first person accounts of various times when people feel they've had good or bad sex education. And it featured her going to some very specific sex education workshops that she learned new things from, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and so that was, it was a bit of a, a kind of work listen as well as a an interest listen. It just popped up on my script as something I might be interested in. I think possibly because um, I've read other things about um, kind of sex education within books or kind of, um, women and sex and how they're represented in books maybe I don't know um and then I my hold for this one uh came up a little while ago wasn't able to listen to it and then I felt feel like I was on hold for it for ages but I finally listened to directed by James Burroughs which is um written and narrated by James Burroughs and he is five decades of stories from the legendary director of Taxi, Cheers, Frasier, Friends, Will and Grace and more um, and this book really made me want to start watching Cheers. I've seen like locations for Cheers when I've been in Boston. I've watched the entire Frasier series but I've never watched an episode of Cheers. I know it has Ted Danson in it, I know it has like various other people in it, Kirstie Alley was in it, Woody Harrelson's in it, you know some people that I really enjoy watching on the screen are in it as well as obviously Frasier himself, um, Kelsey Grammer and then but yeah I hadn't watched that so it was really interesting listening to his background and I didn't realize that his father was a predominant writer as well and he kind of grew up in that like New York City theatre scene which was really cool but it was very nice that it was narrated by him as well as being written by him because you did feel like you were just sitting painting the staircase um while, <laughs> whilst he was chatting to you about his life's work and it sounds like I, I spent a long time painting the staircase I did like <laughs> it's quite intricate trying to like 
paint the little ins and outs of the spindles that come down on the staircase and then everything needs two coats and so I did the, the that bit the banistery bit and then another day I did the skirting body bit so <clears throat> It's done now though, it's fine. Um, but yeah, these books are all connected with me sitting and painting a staircase. And then one that I read <clears throat> at the very, very beginning of the month and I can't even remember. I feel like I have posted a review of it, but I might find that I haven't. And I feel bad because I think I maybe read it like either just as we moved or um, like while we were like, doing the big move, like moving stuff in, moving furniture in. And this is The Girl from Donny Gold by Carmel Harrington. And I really, really enjoyed this one. I remember painting some skirting board listening to this one. So I think we hadn't moved any furniture in yet. And um, I love Carmel Harrington and I love how she does these kind of multi-centred um, books with these completely different um, locations and this one also has two completely different timelines as well and so that's really really interesting um, but this one has this kind of like titanic style um, boat accident which was so like out of the blue and kind of like scary and um, like worrying and sad and oh my goodness she did it so well because that's not my takeaway from this book my takeaway from this book is this this love of these two characters and how the love for each other fueled this love for this other child who's another part of the book and oh it was just wonderful it was very intense but very very good highly recommend and if I haven't posted a review already it is coming your way I promise you um, and then I think I'm up down to my final, yeah, final audiobook. I bought this one on Audible. I feel like I maybe pre-ordered it on Audible and then kind of forgot that it was coming. Um, and so I listened to this one during the first week back at school. There you go, a little bit more insight as to where I listened to this one. So this one was mainly listened to in the car. Um, but in the last section of this one, um, it did have me crying in the car on the way to work. So here you go. Um, if you are um, on TikTok, at all you will know this person um this is me versus brain an overthinker's guide to life by Hayley morris and um this is i found her videos because you know she has brain as a main character and then it's like brain and hotel vagina and brain saying oh uh we you know we need to take all these pants on holiday and what if we what if we poo ourselves and what if we poo ourselves twice that day we better take all the pants and that kind of thing and i'm like yes i i understand this but this does actually delve into kind of intrusive thoughts and anxiety and panic attacks um, and sort of talks about her life as well. I didn't realise that she um, worked as part of the um, cultural representative programme at Disney World. That was interesting. She talks about COVID, she talks about her family and yes, the very last couple of sections of the book did make me sob on my way to work. So really recommend this one. It's written and narrated by her and so if you have connected with her videos online, um, then it will be sort of a familiar voice talking to you perhaps on your commute or whilst you know painting skirting boards apparently um, so yeah there we have it that is everything I read in the month of April not May as I keep kind of trying to say it's because I'm thinking about my May reading as well um, ebooks physical books audiobooks as I say in my um, in the description box my blog and my goodreads have reviews of a couple of these and reviews of a couple of these i know scheduled to post soon so make sure you check check there if you're looking for a written review of those book versus movie book versus tv series for fleischman is in trouble is coming your way so make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell and i also have the final part of the hopeless series on my may tbr so make sure you check that video out as well i will leave that one in the end screen let me know in the comments what you read in the month of april and what you do whilst listening to audiobooks if you are an audiobook listener like me um and uh, i will be back with another video very soon if you enjoyed this one give you a Give it a thumbs up and I will see you then. Thanks for watching.